Greetings, greetings, and welcome back. And um, Peter, I thought it'd be useful for our uh, our people coming to the website asking about expert pensions, and in particular those legal people, those legal beagles, those lawyers, those solicitors, those pension lawyers, those pension consultants. Uh, what do expert pensions consultants? How can we help? these legal people with their claims uh, either defending or in fact representing an individual who's maybe had uh, the wrong advice. What do we do? How can we help them? I think we can help them in two ways, John. And um, I think what we should cover off first of all is that um, we appreciate that the, the solicitor, the lawyer, understands and applies the law. Absolutely. That, that's the first implication from what we've been discussing over the last several months and in addition the cases that we've been asked to comment on and provide expert witness statements for and an overview of. Yeah, no, absolutely, Peter. And I would echo that and I think that's a really important point. Of the solicitors that we've dealt with, lawyers, pension lawyers, pension people, they apply the law. They are the experts in the application of the law. There's no doubts about it. They are the ones that are going to the mediation meetings. Um, they have got a very, very strong grasp on the, on the law, that's for sure. Where so, do you think we fit? How can we work th alongside them? I think then our expertise then branches out into a couple of different areas, but let's just concentrate on two. Um, so the first would be the technical understanding of the pensions legislation. Well, mm -hmm. what, what do I mean by that? So one of the cases that we dealt with was um, quite a rare situation these days, and that is enhanced protection. So we are in 2023, June 2023, and enhanced protection was available as of April 2006 with a cut-off guillotine date of 2009. Yep. And we were quite taken aback in the particular case that we dealt with that uh, the other side, uh, our um, opponents, had an actuary and a so-called pension expert as well. Mm -hmm. However, they had misinterpreted and miscalculated relevant benefit accrual under the enhanced protection. And therefore, we were, it was quite easy for us to be able to prove that what was being stated as a continuation of enhanced protection would in fact have been lost. Yeah, I think there's two points on that which are quite interesting is, yeah, enhanced protection, it's one of, the, one of those rare ones. And, uh, you know, that's when we often get called in to help uh, people when there are cases which are not Standard cases, if you like. You're running the mill cases. You know, you know, the standard cases. <laughs> yeah. And I think there was that enhanced protection element. There was also the pre-AD element as well, Peter, which was critical to this case in terms of the assessment of the options pre-AD and then the options post-AD. So still having some understanding of the pre-AD position, and I know that's a long time away, back in 2006, which seems like a million years away. Now we're in 2023. But... There are still these cases that come through. That's right, John. Uh, so, yeah, absolutely. In terms of our perspective on the pensions legislation, I think we can help pension experts, pension legal experts, uh, understand from a different perspective, maybe more from a financial planning perspective or a pension planning perspective. We can help them understand the financial advisor's perspective on that. I agree. Second part, are we doing it now or are we in the next video? Yeah, no, we'll do it now. Yeah. We'll do it now? Yeah. Okay. Because I think so, the two of them join up. That's right, yeah. Uh, another aspect that we are regularly asked to comment on would be a complaint is made against the advice that an IFA is, has, has given and uh, the uh, PI insurer appoints a lawyer and they come to us to see if you, we, as a competent person, would agree with what advice had originally been given. What is it that we look for in those situations, John? Well, I would expand a little bit on what you were saying there because I think uh, one of the things that we can really help solicitors with is 
an assessment of suitability. So I very much see the legal guys and the way we work with our legal people as, you know, very much they're applying the law, they're dealing with the, 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 the detail that's required. You know, these guys really need to be on their brief as we've talked about, you know. These people are sharp, smart, hardworking, you know, they know what they're doing in terms of the law. I think where we can now provide is a little bit of a different perspective on how the legislation is applied in a financial planning context. But I think critically, Peter, where we sit is assessment of the suitability of the advice that was given in the context of the law and COBS. I think it's a very good point because it, so many people overlook the fact that it's not the outcome that is being assessed here, it is the process. Has the person who gave the advice followed the process? Have they met the toll gates that they should have gone through along the journey? Along the journey, Peter. <laughs> along the journey. Absolutely. That's so. a great way to put it, Peter, because if the gate is over there, yeah. but there's a number of gate posts along the way leading up, if you haven't gone through that process, we have no option other than declare the case is unsuitable. Yes, and, and we've seen cases, John, where the outcome may well have been suitable for the client. However, sadly and unfortunately, the evidence to support that outcome isn't present on the file. Absolutely. How, many, how much percentage would you go as far as to say, Peter, on that? I know the percentage I'm going to say. What percentage would you say of the files that we've seen where you potentially would have agreed with the outcome, potentially, that we've had to mark down as unsuitable? Well, I know the figure, John, because I saw you write it down before. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that you're going to say 95%. Yep. But the, the point that has come out to us from our experiences is that sadly and unfortunately, it isn't on the file. And if it yep. isn't on the file, it didn't happen. There might be inferences um, in respect of something. So, for example, a, a, a classic one is inheritance. You know, somebody's going to inherit really when and there's no there's no there's no data in respect of that there's no confirmation of what the inheritance is is it stocks and shares is it a fixed asset what what is it when are the parents going to die because we we don't know no. there's no evidence in the, but just a blase comment along the lines of you won't need the retirement income because you're going to inherit x isn't sufficient. No, no, it's an end. we haven't touched the surface on that. We're going to stop there. We're going to come back and carry on with this conversation. And I think uh, this uh, assessment of suitability and the process and the other word that you just used there, Peter, which I think is interesting, is evidence. We'll come back to that in a second. Cheers.